Hector Macho Camacho. Macho time is my way. If there's no way, there's no way. Hector Camacho's way was learned on the streets of Spanish Harlem, where he developed his style and survived the childhood of street fighting and petty crime. It's a far cry from Camacho's preferred environment for training, the peaceful surroundings of Lewiston, Florida. He sets up camp here in a rural zone adorned with symbols of his former lifestyle. No street battles in Clewiston, just the battle for boxing excellence. And despite an unending succession of trainers and handlers and an often chaotic approach to the sport, the so-called macho man has managed to remain unbeaten. Pound for pound, I'm the best fighter in the world, regardless of anybody else. I am the most charis charismatic fighter out there. It's just a lack of fighting that been hurting me. But, you know, I'm coming back. I ain't going nowhere. I'm still young, 24 years old, mean, cute, handsome, husky. Hey, you see me. Hector Camacho captured his first title as a super featherweight in 1983. And when weight and managerial problems forced him into the lightweight division, he made the most of his opportunity against champion Jose Luis Ramirez, flooring him and scoring a convincing unanimous decision for his second title. But in his first title defense against ex-champion Edwin Rosario, he faced his stiffest challenge as he was hurt badly in round five for the first time in his career and then staggered again later in round 11. Camacho hung on to capture a controversial split decision, but the criticism mounted and peaked in his last fight. Though he floored Cornelius Boza Edwards with a combination in round one, the rest of this fight was spent in reverse, dancing, jabbing, moving away from Boza in an entirely defensive fashion. The critics argued that Camacho was no longer entitled to his image as the self-proclaimed macho man. Man. Macho Man is great, you know? If I'm too complicated for the people, just tune in, keep watching me. What can I tell you? It's Macho Time. And if the story of Camacho is that of a man trying to live up to his own identity, the story of Howard Davis Jr. is one of large but unfulfilled potential. Today's bout may represent his last best chance to try to get in line for the world championship he wants so badly. Howard Davis was the best known, the most successful, and perhaps the most talented member of the 76 Olympic team that produced five gold medalists. Four went on to capture professional world titles, and Howard had his chances against champion Jim Watt. Davis faltered in the hostile Glasgow environment and lost a unanimous decision. Against champion Edwin Rosario in San Juan, Davis staggered Rosario and seemed to have the title won. But with only seconds left, he walked into a left hook and lost a close split decision. Since then, he's moved up a weight class and earned a hard-fought draw with undefeated 84 Olympian Meldrick Taylor. A victory today could bring Davis another chance to join his fellow Montreal gold medalists as a world champ. And as he told Alex Wallow yesterday, he enters with new confidence. Well, you know, I, I generally don't make a prediction, Alex. Uh, I feel very strongly I'm going to knock him out. And uh, I usually come in with the attitude, I'm going to win, period. But for some strange reason, uh, through the months I've been training for this fight, weeks I've been training for this fight, I've been coming up with a little monster inside me that's saying that's going to tell me that's gonna knock, I'm going to knock him out. I feel very strongly that I will. And having now heard from both of the fighters, let's hear from ABC Sports boxing expert Alex Wallow. Alex, I think those are fascinating stories surrounding both men today. Jim, in terms of Hector Camacho, he needs to prove something in the ring here today. We just seen he's had two straight unimpressive performances. He has not knocked out an opponent in his last five fights. He's been inactive for seven months. And that spotlight, which Hector craves so desperately, has begun to shift away from him. A win today is not enough. Hector needs to be macho, not just at press conferences, not on the streets, but in the ring. What about his opponent, Howard Davis, Jr.? Well, the key word here is opponent. Howard is again cast in the role of opponent, a stepping stone for Hector Camacho, as he was last year against Meldrick Taylor. But against Taylor, he fought a tough and courageous fight. He says he's prepared and determined to do the same thing here today. Both fighters have plenty of incentive because the winner almost certainly will get a shot at the junior welterweight title sometime this year. All right, Alex and both of the fighters making their way or are already in the ring. In fact, Howard Davis Jr. already in there, and you look at Hector Macho Camacho as he brings his considerable entourage with him toward ringside. We'll have one commercial message here, and then we'll be back to start the fight.
Now we are back live in Atlantic City, and you look at the tail of the tape between Camacho and Davis. Davis, seven years older. He is also taller and has something of a reach advantage. Camacho had to struggle to make weight at 141 pounds. Took him a half hour, and he weighed in three times, Alex. That was last night, so he should have recovered overnight and shouldn't be weakened too much by that. But by three and a half pounds, Camacho is the heaviest of his career. And I think one of the intangibles here is how will that affect him? Will he sacrifice any of his legendary speed and will he be stronger than he's been in recent fights a quick word on strategy in the bout well Camacho starts very very fast Davis is a very slow starter if Davis is to win he must stop Camacho in his tracks with some solid power punches early if he can do that Hector will get on his bicycle if he cannot make Hector respect his punching power uh, Camacho will steamroller Davis both men are extremely quick as you pointed out with outstanding boxing skills one difference which may be significant Camacho Camacho has never been down, and Howard Davis has been down 10 times as a pro. Under the rules of the New Jersey Athletic Control Board, the three knockdown rule, the mandatory eight count, the standing eight count are all in effect. Scoring on the 10-point must system by three judges, the referee does not score in the bout. The referee is Paul Benty of Bayonne, New Jersey. The judges, all from New Jersey, John Stewart, Frank Brunette, and Lynn Carter. And right now, Ring announcer Ed Darien finishes with his festivities. Referee Paul Venti steps in to talk to Howard Davis and Hector Macho Camacho. And very interestingly, if you're thinking about the psyche of Hector Camacho and if he will come out and try to be impressive, that very mixed reception that you heard him get in his introduction could be incentive. He heard booze in his last fight with Cornelius Boza Edwards, and he heard booze in his introduction here today. How that will affect him remains to be seen, but it could be a key to the fight. Round one begins. This is a 10-round fight. And Camacho starts out coming forward. Goes without saying, but nevertheless, we will point out for anyone relatively new to the sport, Camacho is a southpaw conventional right-handed fight. And it is very interesting that yesterday I asked Howard Davis how many southpaws that he fought in his career, and he said, I don't remember fighting any, and I said, well, Jim Watt was a southpaw, referring to when he made his first try for a world title and got beat. He smiled sheepishly and said, yeah, I've been trying to forget that fight. But Jim Watt, I believe, is the only southpaw Howard has ever faced. So he will have to make an adjustment here. And for a slow starter, a man naturally a slow starter, as Howard is, he likes to figure out his opponent. Generally, it also takes us a time. Good left, good straight left there by Camacho. And Davis is a little bit wobbly there, just a little bit, as he held on. Uh, the point I was trying to make was, it also takes you some time to figure out a southpaw. Another straight left by Hector Camacho. That one did not land full. Davis, however, did land a jab, which was his first effective blow of the bout. We're about halfway through round one. Hector Camacho has seized the initiative in the first part of the round. And this kind of Howard Davis is the old Howard Davis, the Howard Davis who never set himself, who tried to punch and move out of the way of punches at the same time. He's going to have to find a way to plan his feet. Good he's point, Alex. Fight. Not the effective Howard Davis who was able to punch inside against Juju Dixon and Meldrick Taylor in his last two fights. You saw Davis land his jab, and then Camacho countered uh, himself with his own jab right over Davis's. That is something that Howard Davis is not used to having happen. He's not used to people who have the speed of Hector Camacho. Meldrick Taylor, his opponent two fights ago, has tremendous hand speed, but did not use the jab very effectively in that fight. Hector Camacho, one of the few fighters in the world who can actually claim a quickness and speed advantage, or at least he's likely to believe he has it, against Howard Davis. There's Howard Davis on the ropes, not taking too much punishment. He, when he fought Meldrick Taylor, Howard laid on the ropes, covered up his head like he is there, and gave away the body. It'll be interesting to see if Hector Camacho, who is not known as a body puncher, will take the body that Howard Davis does give away in order to protect his fragile chin. Davis hooking with the left. Before that, he tried the right cross a little bit short with both punches. And Paul Venti, the referee, warned Davis for holding behind the head and then throwing Camacho onto the ropes. So round one comes to a close. It has been a Hector Camacho.
begins in Atlantic City, and Hector Camacho's just out of his corner with a right jab and a left to the body, and again takes control. I was a little bit surprised Hector didn't start even faster. He clearly won the first round, but he was being careful. He was not jumping in. He was not... The crowd reaction at the beginning of this fight did not make him careless. He's still being careful. He still respects Davis. Davis corner there. Be first, John. Howard Davis has not been first. He's not been getting off first. And when he has flicked that jab, it's been a little bit of a lazy jab. He's got to snap his jab. John, because Davis's nickname is John John. His father, Howard Davis Sr., was nicknamed John. Good body punches there. The right. Those are devastating body punches by Hector Camacho. We said earlier he's not known as a body puncher, but if Howard Davis gives him that left side, he just showed there that he's going to take it. There is Sugar Ray Leonard, a former teammate of Howard Davis's on the 1976 Olympic team, who was at ringside when Howard drew with Meldrick Taylor last year, and is back here again taking the time to watch his teammate. That was a close-knit team, that 1976 Olympic team under Sarge Johnson. And Howard Davis is not second to Sugar Ray Leonard in terms of wanting Howard Davis to get that dream and win that world title, and Sugar Ray Leonard is here trying to root his teammate home. One thing becomes apparent here midway through round two, Alex. Camacho is forcing Davis to think so much about defending himself that Davis has no offense at all. There's a right hand, a good right hand punch. The first time Howard Davis really set himself. But Camacho going away. This is not an unusual performance for Howard Davis. He always starts slowly. Now he's starting to set himself, and now he's backing Camacho up. Beautiful, beautiful right jab there by Hector Camacho. But indeed, Davis has begun to open up for the first time in the back. Just as I said that he had no offense, he put that right cross, his best punch so far. And he should maintain that momentum. He should keep Hector backing up. He shouldn't let Hector set himself. Because if he can make Hector respect his power, it'll be a different Hector Camacho in the ring with him. A less effective Hector Camacho. Good right hand by Camacho. And he goes back to the body, where he's been very effective. Fighting a smart fight. Two intelligent boxers. But right now, Camacho is putting it together and it's better. One thing about Hector, and it, it was true, I think, of Sugar Ray Leonard in the Hagler fight. He gets so dazzled by their hand speed, sometimes you forget to see if the punches land. Three begins in Atlantic City. If you are scoring the bout along with us at home, Officially, we give the first two rounds to Hector Camacho. Good right hand by Camacho, countering as Davis tries to move in. Hector Camacho is in range in this fight. He's staying closer to Howard Davis. He knows Davis has a height reach advantage. He knows he has to, to get in there and mix it up. Take chances. In response to those who criticize him for backing up against Cornelius Boza Edwards, Camacho claims that he could not eat for three days before that bout as he struggled to make weight at 135 pounds. trying to escape along the ropes, and as Hector was retreating, Davis drilled a straight right hand and caught it. Howard Davis did not lean back like they did. He got hit by one punch, he leaned back again, didn't get caught, but he must slip punches and be in a position to deliver counter punches of his own. own. Davis just eating the jab now as Camacho scores at will with him. than some may have suspected they would be. Again, Camacho finishes the exchange. And you saw there a classic Camacho tactic as he spun Davis with one hand and punched him with the other. in return. 
return. himself to throw punches but you can see that as he sets himself he's thinking defensively he's thinking about bailing out he just is not letting his hands go every once in a while Davis is able to land an effective punch there have been two very good right crosses but by far most of the action being initiated and finished by Hector Camacho who has worked well to the body and to the head and by my personal calculation has now won the first three rounds. Jim Lapley with Alex Wallow live from the convention hall in Atlantic City as Hector Camacho begins round four with a flurry against Howard Davis Jr. Camacho, 30 wins, no losses, 15 knockouts, but he hasn't scored a knockout in more than two years. In between rounds, Hector Camacho's corner told him, you're fighting a perfect fight. Just keep being patient. Keep working your way inside. And there was concern in Howard Davis's corner. John, referring to Howard by his nickname, John, you're not getting off. You must get off. Both fighters regard themselves as being self-managed at this point of their career. Neither has a strong guiding figure in the corner or indeed in training. the jab twice. Camacho goes into a momentary low. We are halfway through round four. With his, and more accurate with his punch over the top of Howard Davis's left. Camacho not quite as busy in this round as in the previous three, but he has continued to finish most exchanges. Camacho continues to control the action against the back live in Atlantic City for round five between Hector Macho Camacho and Howard Davis. Davis has just joined us. That is Camacho, of course, in the red, white, and blue sequin shorts, and Howard Davis in the black trunks. Camacho's a little bit closer here. He's moved in a little bit closer, and he's not being made to pay for it by Howard Davis. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line that at the end of this round, we'll be taking a station break. Meanwhile, Camacho corners Davis against the ropes and pounds away to the body. Howard Davis told us yesterday he thought it'd be a chess match for the first three or four rounds, and then he'd open up and take over. Uh, it was a chess match that he got trounced in. It's much easier to keep up in a fight than to catch up, and Howard Davis has dug himself a big hole here. He is not by nature a knockout puncher. He's a boxer. He doesn't have the power to turn this fight around in a hurry. He appeared in the first two rounds, Alex, to have difficulty solving the left-hand stance and deliveries of Camacho, who is known for delivering punches from odd angles. Could be a 
Actually, that may be one of them. Just not letting his hands go. He's reacting and he's not taking the initiative at all. And he just took a solid left hand from Camacho right under the chin. Yeah, but he waited 
too long in round six. I thought he gave away the first two and a half minutes. Not much in the round, but I thought Camacho won it. Paul Venti. Marty Howard Davis. Howard has more experience. He's the veteran. Although not a whole lot more in terms of total fight. 30 for Camacho, 33 for Davis. himself much more now. He knows how much energy he has to expend, and he tries to space it over the 10 rounds. Howard dominated the late rounds against Tutu Dixon. He will need to do the same thing, in our view, to have a chance to win today against Camacho. And again, he's let Camacho build up a big early lead here in this round. is it not that a young man with a reputation for not being much of a body puncher has been so willing to concentrate on the ribcage as Camacho has today. He's had a total of like six minutes. So make sure you tune in early for that one. McDonald also has big, big punching power with his right hand. Meanwhile, we are midway through round eight as Davis continues to try to stalk Camacho. This is another round, though, in which Camacho has dominated the first minute and a half, particularly with the body punching. We just saw Hector do something which has been one of his trademarks. He grabbed behind Howard Davis' head with his right hand to try to pull him down into a left. Paul Venti warned him about it. He has not done it as often as he generally does. Now, that's the first warning today, and he's been warned frequently about it in his previous bout. And as we come to the 
the end of round number eight. It would now appear that Camacho is enough in control of the fight that Howard Davis would need a very unlikely knockout in the last two rounds. Back in Atlantic City where Hector Macho Camacho has fought a careful, patient, and very effective first eight rounds against Howard Davis Jr. Davis now up against him as he tries to rally in the last two rounds. jabbing and then backing out of range. That was a slapping left hook from Davis. Not much effect. On those occasions in recent rounds when he's been able to land the right hand, usually it happened when Hector was backing up. It lessens the impact and the subsequent effect of the blow. Another good body punch from Camacho as Davis leaned down into it. time by Davis. And Camacho comes back with the straight left. Four minutes now left in the fight. Camacho concentrating almost exclusively on the body as Davis peekaboo. I just wonder at this stage of a fight what could be going through Howard Davis's mind. How could he possibly think he could stand there, put his hands up in front of his face, and take 20 punches without responding? It does not appear that he has a coherent plan for going after the knockout he might need, probably needs, in fact, to win the fight. short with the right hands. And again, Camacho batters into the rib. I mean, he doesn't appear to be injured. Right now, he looks a little bit tired. He didn't see anything happen that indicated he had an injury. That was a good one, two by Camacho. Davis backing straight out. And when you back straight out, you get tagged if fighters put punches together like Hector Camacho just did. Round nine comes to a close. It is still all Hector Camacho. And we will now stay here between rounds. Camacho plays to the crowd. Howard Davis goes over for some final advice. This is it. Good job. Reminder, friends, for yeah. professional boxing action tomorrow John. afternoon. Right. Let's go. Right here, in convention. Good right hand. Can you come up with another push? Yes. Throw him one shot at a time, baby. Last yes. round coming up. Last round. The International Boxing Federation World World Heavyweight Championship. Scheduled for a fifth round. That's the last round coming up. Last round. Oh, the top of the top. Let's get on. 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 Let
already said about himself. He isn't shy about self-congratulation, that's for sure. He isn't shy about anything. He weighed in buck naked last night before a mixed crowd. And this is a fight that must be turned to disappointment. There were a lot of speculation that these are two boxers coming in. And generally, those two styles don't mix well. But I thought one of the fighters would try to take over the fight and assert himself. The first fighter to make the other back up would continue that kind of momentum, but that has not happened. Hector Camacho has fought a, fought a very smart fight. He has taken the initiative right away and kept it. Uh, he hasn't seen any reason to really take a lot of chances to go for a knockout. He's won virtually every round on our scorecards here. It has not been a sensational fight. It's been a tactical fight. It's been a chess match. But it has been far from thrilling. And on the part of Howard Davis, an inexplicable fight. Not on the surface a very smart fight. Isn't that right? He was talking so confidently before the fight, talking about how he felt for the first time he really believed that he could knock out Camacho. And then to come out and fight this kind of a fight is just, it's unfathomable. Unfathomable. Where does he go from here? We'll have to ask him. Hopefully we'll get the time after the fight. A loss to Camacho is, is not a disgrace, but it certainly is not something that puts him in line for a title shot. And he says that's all he's in boxing for. Camacho, excuse me. Yeah, I'm sorry, just in terms of Hector Camacho, where he goes from here is theoretically on to a shot at the junior welterweight title. There are three fairly nondescript champions, Patricio Oliva, Shushoi Hamada of Japan, and Terry Marsh of England. As the fight comes to a close, and Hector Camacho would be a clear favorite over any of those. All right, we'll be back here for the final decision after this commercial and a final wide world word from the Kentucky Derby. Then we'll come back in. We are back and live at the Atlantic City Convention Center where we now await the final decision on the bout between Hector Macho Camacho and Howard Davis Jr. And standing by now with that decision ring announcer Ed Darian. Ladies and gentlemen from Atlantic City's Convention Hall via the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino on the boardwalk, the scoring by points as follows. Judges John Stewart and Frank Brunette each score 97-93. And Judge Lynn Carter observed the fight at 98-93. For the winner, by unanimous decision, for his 32nd straight win, it is now for Max Hector Macho Camacho. Camacho. So Camacho remains unbeaten. Howard Davis absorbs the fourth loss of his career to go with 29 wins and a draw. And right now, Alex Wallow is standing by with Hector Camacho. Alex? All right. Hector, you took the initiative in the opening round and you never gave it up. How did you feel at the weight, Hector? I feel good. I feel strong. You know, I'm just ready to go. Everybody, come on, I'm staying busy. Mazzini, don't hold me up, because I ain't going nowhere. Later for everything. Everybody seeing what happens. I'm back. I'm planning to stay busy. I feel mentally clear. Mazzini, two weeks signed the contract. Oh, that was Terry match. I'm coming after you. Rosario, culéate que vengo para Puerto Rico para un beso. He was referring to Bumbo Mancini. It's rumored that Hector may get a shot with Bumbo Mancini making a comeback. How did you feel? At the, how did you feel in the fight, Hector? Did he ever do anything to bother you? Well, uh, I was trying to knock his head off. He's a great fighter. Always been, always been a great champion. I'll call him a champion. He's an Olympic champion. I always used to look up to him. You know, I feel good that I beat a good fight like him. I knew it was going to be this kind of fight. I knew he was going to keep moving on me. He fought a great fight. Congratulations to you. Now back to Jim. So long for Alex and me. Presents Tours Professional Boxing. Today, live from Atlantic City, New Jersey, 
Bobby Chez defends his IBF World Light Heavyweight Championship against challenger Diamond Jim McDonald. McDonald comes out of Flint, Michigan with a solid right hand and a granite chin. 20 wins, three losses, 18 KOs. This will be his second title shot. One of the three losses came against Michael Spinks two years ago. He gets the chance against one-time middleweight golden boy, now light heavyweight champion Bobby Chez. Chez, also a slugger with 31 wins, one loss, 22 knockouts in his career. His first two defenses of this IBF light heavyweight title have lasted a total of just over six minutes. So the two knockout punchers will go against each other